in three, two, one. Boom. Welcome to 32 and Goal. I am your host, Corey, and today we got Rob on the line. We're going to be talking about week eight predictions. Um, first, let's start about uh, the game last night, Thursday night football between the Texans and who do they play? <laughs> it's a good, uh, good, Dolphin. good start. Yeah. Good start. Good start. The most, yeah, the most forgettable team in the league right now. Ah, man. Yeah, man. I was talking to my buddy who lives in Houston pretty much throughout the course of the game. And, you know, I've said multiple times that Texans are kind of my AFC team. Uh, so I was watching the game a little bit. Deshaun Watson, he said, you know, he said he called that Deshaun Watson was going to have his coming out party yesterday. And mm. he pretty much did. You know, me and you are playing each other in fantasy football this week. Had I played him uh-huh. and Lamar Miller, like I almost did, I'd be up 50 points on you right now, but I did not. Uh, he he I'm went. He didn't. Yeah, right. He went 16 for 20, 239 yards, five touchdowns. It's not bad. Not bad, Deshaun Watson. Not bad. No, so. I had a good game. Uh, on the opposite side, Brock Osweiler had <laughs> a terrible game. Um, yeah, and I, I think the Texans are. Patting themselves on the back for letting that guy go and picking up Deshaun Watson. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's got to be a good feeling to beat the guy who kind of screwed you guys over in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Osweiler went twenty-one for thirty-seven. Not bad. Danny Amendola had as many throwing touchdowns as Brock Osweiler did yesterday. So that's just something. Brock Osweiler. Uh, he had should have had a few more picks though too. Yeah. With. He took a bad ball. I want to talk a little bit about the refs last night, though. Ugh. Ugh, right? Like, what What in the world? That was the the biggest clusterfuck to the start of an NFL game that I think I ever have seen. It was absolutely crazy. Well, yeah, you had that, like, that, uh, the ensuing kickoff of the game, and you had a, a penalty on there, and then the refs took about five minutes to discuss what was even going on. Um, and then, uh, and then they had to kick again and it just, uh, it was just a mess the whole game, especially that, uh, right before halftime when they need the ball and then brought the entire team back out, both teams just to kneel it again. And nobody cared. (laughs) Yeah. It was why, why even do that? That's like, uh, like I also have a thing where like, I understand the rules of the game, but when you score a touchdown that wins the game. I feel like you shouldn't have to kick that PAT. Like, why, why, after the celebration, why bring people back out to kick the PAT? And it's like, I don't know. It's the same thing. Like, they were in kneeling formation. Why make them, why make them come back out and do that again? Like, uh, and like, you saw the, um, the, the ref who got fired, uh, last week, uh, for missing a false start against the Chargers and Browns. Um, and I, I think refs uh, took that one to heart, and I think they're actually afraid to make to, the wrong calls. Not, yeah, like, or wrong calls. Yeah, and like what they called was right. Like it was part of the rules. Um, so I, I think they're yeah, kind of a kind of afraid right now to to miss kind of some stuff. But then they miss big plays like a tripping on a kickoff or whatever. But yeah, the ones that were pretty obvious. Um. So DeAndre Hopkins had one of the greatest catches I've ever seen yesterday. Uh, you know, I think uh, I, I, I think it was like the best catch I've ever seen. Yeah, it was absolutely insane. He caught it pretty much with his nutsack, and <laughs> like I don't know. Like I know a lot of people are trying to call him uh, Optimus Prime. I think it's kind of like a, but I think he almost needs his own nickname in a way. You know, I don't think he – I think if you name him after a Transformer character, he kind of will always be in Megatron shadow. But DeAndre Hopkins is kind of coming into his own, like solidifying himself as one of the best catchers, one of the best receivers in the game right now. And, you know, I think I think yeah. he's doing really well. Um, what does he have so far? He has uh, – he scored, what, two touchdowns last night. Had two two big touchdowns. Yeah, so, I mean he 
he was shut down for most of it until second half when the the Dolphins just kind of gave up on defense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the Dolphins do have a pretty decent secondary. Uh, they did the same thing similar to Marvin Jones Jr. against the Lions the week before on thir- or on Sunday. Um, DeAndre Hopkins is better than uh, Marvin Jones, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, the, they have decent secondary down there in Miami. But, yeah, Hopkins has six touchdowns on the season already. You know, he's doing really well, 789 yards. <clears throat> Averaging ninety eight point yeah. six yards a game, and you know he he kind of yeah, what I was saying like uh, the Texans you know after starting zero uh, and three man they're they're five and zero now five and three um, oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm I'm really liking this uh, this Texans team man I think they're they're you know Deshaun Watson starting to um, come back to form oh, you know we're starting to see him play like he did last year and. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think we talked last week or the week before about maybe the Colts even winning this division because how weak it is. But uh, now I really think it is the Texans to win. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Colts are decent. Andrew Luck is a decent quarterback. But this, this Texans team is probably the best down in that division, especially after last night. If Watson can perform, you know, anywhere near that you know he's playing with a bruised rib he's playing with like damaged lungs they had to drive him on the bus you know from florida you know back to texas because they were afraid the the air levels and the plane were gonna mess up his lungs and it's like if you're a if you're a texans fan every single time he runs the ball like he does i would i'd be clenching my butthole man like he's he's fragile he's a fragile guy he's a humble guy but he's i'd be scared you know he's not in full form yet i think last night like my buddy was saying he is having his coming out party but you know going forward they have a pretty decent you know winnable schedule they got the broncos next week you know in in denver so that's gonna be tough but then they go redskins titans browns colts jets like all of those are winnable and definitely i wouldn't be surprised if uh the texans win you know this division and make somewhat of a push in the AFC. So, but yeah, overall good game. I thought uh, Texans did really well. I thought they were gonna get like mid twenties, but they they scored pretty pretty high there, uh, forty two points. And so that's another you know, as far as like primetime games go, since we started doing this, you know, in week five. I have not missed a single primetime game uh, pick. So, there's that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you and I are both sitting at 68.9%. Almost 69%. <laughs> nice. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, let's start talking about this week's games, though. Any game you want to talk about in particular? I think we should just go in order, man. I think this uh, <clears throat> this is a big week. Uh, there's a lot of games that um, I think are going to really start shaping um, how the rest of the season goes. And a lot of these games this week are going to have major um, playoff implications as well. Um, so I think this is a very exciting week. Um, a lot better than last week for sure. And uh, just a bunch of good games this week. Yeah, I agree. We got uh, five division games this week, um, you know. So a lot of these, a lot of these games are really, especially with the way it is right now, with so many teams being, you know, one, two games away from, you know, being in the lead. Uh, every game, pretty much this week, is important to one team that's playing at least. So let's uh, let's go in order then. Let's do that. Eagles. The three and four Eagles are going to the three and four Jaguars. Yeah, man, this is a this is an interesting game. I mean, the Eagles went to the Super Bowl last year, and the Jaguars were you know a, a game away from playing in the Super Bowl, and now they're both sitting at below five hundred. Like, <laughs> this is a, this is a weird uh, weird matchup. Um, you know, both these teams last year were praised for their defenses, and now it's kind of because of their defenses that they're not good. <laughs> right. 
Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles defensively are sitting at 17th. So, you know, and Jacksonville, you know, is sixth. And I remember us talking early in the season about how this defense could possibly stop, you know, Kansas City Chiefs and their, like, explosive offense. And that kind of didn't really turn out the way we thought it was going to. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs kind of just rolled over this defense. And, you know, the Eagles don't have as good as an offense as the Cavs, or Kansas City, obviously. Um, but, you know, Carson Wentz is still having a pretty decent year. Ten touchdowns, one interception. Those are pretty good stats. You know, uh, their Zach Ertz has 618 yards. You know, last week, you know, Panthers, uh, you know, Carson Wentz threw 30 for 37, 310 yards, two touchdowns. Um, the Jags have a little bit better of a defense, a little bit better of a secondary than the Eagles. Or the... And, over the uh, Panthers, but you know this this offense is going to. I don't know. I don't know how I want to say this. You know, um, I'm not exactly sure how this game is going to go. I picked the Eagles winning, but I don't think it's going to be a complete blowout. You know, this this team isn't the Super Bowl team that we saw last year. Um, you know the. The Jaguars also seem to be having extreme locker room issues right now. Uh, Blake Bortles has nine touchdowns, eight interceptions. They're not exactly, and a lot of a lot of people, a lot of media, you know, even us in our you know Facebook conversations, are talking about how Blake Bortles is pretty bad. And you know, Blake Bortles just came out. I saw an article on Reddit where he was coming out and saying. You know, when they win, the team gets praised, but when they lose, it's Blake Bortles. You know, he's used to taking these punches from this team, from this franchise, and I don't know. You know, TJ Yeldon is still oh. doing really well. <clears throat> what are you saying? Uh, I, I, I think uh, I, I think the offense is really, really struggling without Leonard Fournette. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a huge part of their offense, but unfortunately, man, they just don't have like, the receivers. They don't have um tj Elden's okay but he's not learning for net you know his team kind of relied on um the receivers last year to make big plays um they lost their two top guys last year and now Fournette's not even playing so this team is relying on blake bortles to put them ahead and he is not that guy he is not the guy who is gonna put up big numbers for them and stuff so they're really struggling in the defense um they're not playing well either. I, I I think this team's a mess right now, and I, like you said, with the locker room issues, man, I I, I don't, I, I just don't see them um, turning around this week, especially in London. So I, I like the Eagles too. Oh yeah, I forgot it was in London. Yeah, it's it's gonna be uh interesting. Another interesting thing about this Sunday is we're gonna full day of football again, starting at you know bright and early. So that's exciting. But yeah, I who do you got yeah. winning? Because I got the Eagles winning, but. Yeah, Eagles too for me. Um, I, I think uh, I think the Eagles just had a bad game last week. Um, bad for quarter. I, I think the Jaguars. A little, yeah, their, their defense is a little better. Um, the Jaguars than the Panthers is, but I think this team is angry. You know, I think this team is mad at themselves. Um, you know, they won the Super Bowl last year, and I, I don't see them just dying. Like I don't see them just giving up. So I, I think this will be a hard fought game. But yeah, I like I like the Eagles. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, Eagles are three and four. Redskins, you know, leading the NFC East are only four and two. They get another win. They're right back in it. Um, you know, the Giants in that division, I don't see them doing well. The Cowboys, they're kind of a dumpster fire as well. So this division is between the Eagles and the Redskins. Um, and now that we're getting into that halfway mark, now that we're in eight or week eight, you know, these teams need to start winning and. Um, they could, you know, there's not they could potentially get a wild card in the NFC. But, you know, you're going to have to start putting up higher numbers, you know. There's like half the teams in the NFC right now have the same record as you. So, if you want to go back to the playoffs, if you kind of want to redeem your and be that Super Bowl team, you guys got to win this game. That's just how it's going to go down. Sure. Um Ravens yep. 4 and 3, Panthers 4 and 2. In Carolina, 
Um, so I have kind of some weird hot takes on this game. Um, the Panthers, I was saying this last week, rely too heavily on the rushing abilities of Cam Newton and not so much his arm. And they also rely too heavily on Christian McCaffrey. This team relies way too heavily on two guys. And, you know, last week the Eagles were pretty much able to shut them down in three out of the four quarters because they limited uh, the, their rushing really hard, really hard. And um, when when Cam Newton can't run, when McCaffrey can't run, they're, they're kind of screwing themselves over because their playbook is kind of limited to their abilities. And, you know, the Ravens have, you know, the ninth best defense against the rush right now. So I think it's going to be an interesting game again. Um, you know, Cam Newton's going to have to pull out some of his weird heroics that he pulled out last week in the fourth to do something similar. Hopefully he can do that a little bit longer this game. But, you know, they limited Christian McCaffrey last week to 29 rushing yards, and they limited Cam Newton to 49 rushing yards. You know, that's both very uncharacteristic of both of those guys. And, you know, if if the Panthers want to win this game against a team that's doing pretty decent, you know, in Baltimore, the Ravens 4-3, and three, you know, Joe Flacco's having a decent year, 11 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. I, I think they're going to have to start throwing the ball a little bit more. Um, every team that you play is going to know you're going to run the ball. Every team you play is going to know that Cam Newton's going to do some weird scramble stuff and run the ball. So I think, I don't know, man. I think this this Panthers need to open up their playbook a little bit more, um, especially going forward. <clears throat> but I have the Panthers. I have the Panthers winning still. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know the offense is. Uh... The, the both offenses are kind of identical to each other. Um, Cam Newton also has 11 touchdowns and four interceptions. Um, and uh, the the defense for the, the Ravens, though, they, they put up a pretty good fight last week against the Saints, but Drew Brees is just, you know, lighting the league up on fire right now. Um, and with the, you know, just a, a fluke missed extra point, the Ravens lost straight at the end there. Um, who knows what would have happened if it went to overtime. Um, I, I think they're a really good team. Um, I just, I think they're like a year or two away from being like a really good team. I think they're stepping in the right direction a lot of ways. Um, but I, I think just uh, Carolina is a really tough place to play. So I, I like Carolina as well. Yeah. You know, um, they, like you said, they are setting up the pieces, you know, they picked up Michael Crabtree not too long ago and, you know, he came over from, you know Oakland, and I think he's doing he's doing really well. Um, I think he made the transition to being a Raven pretty well. He has two touchdowns on the season. You know their rushing game is decent. You know um, Collins has three hundred nine yards, and but you know Joe Flacco is one of those quarterbacks who's never really in the conversation for great quarterbacks. You know he's pretty middle of the road to most people, um, but he's having a he's having a good year. He's having a really good year. Um, I mean, he's not like, obviously, he's not Mahomes or, you know, Drew Brees kind of year, but he's having a decent Joe Flacco year. And, um, you know, both of these teams are sitting at four wins right now. This is another game where, like, the teams need to win. Both teams need to win. And, um, you know, the Panthers win this because they're – they're shooting for that wild card spot right now. They're only one game behind the Saints. And the Ravens, you know, they have one more win than the Steelers right now at four. Um, but that the three losses, you know, this win puts them ahead in the AFC North, you know? Or uh yeah, the AFC North. So both these teams need this win. So this is gonna be another like what you were saying earlier. Just, tough- yeah. Just tough game. And, you know, I don't really have a strong favorite on a lot of these games. And I was just kind of picking with my gut rather than, like, and I got the Panthers winning. But, you know, I could see this being Ravens. You know, Justin, you know, Justin Tucker doesn't miss uh, extra points often. You know, he went 222 for 222 until that last kick. And so, yeah, 
you know, that doesn't happen often. Like you were saying, you know, they could potentially be a five and two team depending on how that happened. Um, yep. So, Broncos, Chiefs. You want to start off? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I, I picked against the Chiefs last week. Um, I thought they would be the classic Chiefs, like they always would. And uh, I was so so. <laughs> um, <laughs> man. This team, this team is just you know, they're they're incredible. Um, they're really fun to watch. Um, Mahomes is the real deal. He he's just so good. Um, Cream Hunt is so good. Tyreek Hill, uh, all these guys, man, they're just all playing well. Um, and it doesn't matter that their defense kind of sucks. Um, this offense is uh, it reminds me a lot of. Um, like the 2011 Packers when they were all, it was just all offense and they could just march down field and score at will. Um, I, I, I have the chiefs winning this um, easily. I, I think the Broncos are, are a tough team, um, tough defense and everything, man, but just, you're going to have to put up points against the chiefs and I'll, I'll take my homes over Keenum every day. Yeah. That's pretty much exactly how my notes go down. You know, this is an AFC West game. Um, Broncos are three and four, but the Chiefs are six and one. And if the Broncos were going to beat the Chiefs, it was going to be in Denver. Um, I don't see the Broncos winning against the Chiefs on the road. Um, you know, Mahomes has twenty-two touchdowns, five interceptions. Um, I think those five interceptions came from two games. It might have been three. You know. Uh, Hill has six hundred thirty-five yards, seven touchdowns. Kelsey three touchdowns. Watkins one touchdown. Hunt. Also has four receiving touchdowns um, and five rushing touchdowns. You know, this offense is so explosive. Like you said, if you're going to beat the Chiefs, you have to, you know, it's it's kind of a dumb saying. If you want to win, you got to put up more points. But if you want to beat the Chiefs, you have to put up a high number of points. And, you know, I pretty much had the same thing. Case Keenum, eight touchdowns, nine interceptions, isn't really the guy to go toe-to-toe with Mahomes right now. Um, you know, Lindsey... Lindsey, the running back in uh, Denver, he's he's doing all right. Uh, I kind of like the guy. Uh, two touchdowns. He seems pretty explosive on the ground. Um, you know, he gets – when you talk about Lindsey, you talk about his height a lot and his size. And, you know, he's doing really well for being, you know, half the size of the defensive lineman he's running through. Um, I, I expect him to have a pretty decent game again against the Chiefs like he did last time. But – you know, you know they also have Sanders and Thomas. Um, if the Chiefs had, or if the Broncos had a better quarterback, you know, I think they could do it. But uh, Case Keenum's not really showing me that he should be a starting quarterback for the Broncos right now. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos start looking for, you know, some sort of replacement in Case Keenum. I know, I know they just kind of signed him, but you know, is he really a franchise quarterback? I don't know. I don't know. I got the Chiefs winning as well. Um, I, I think they're going to continue doing really well this season. I don't. I don't think they're a fifteen and one team, but I think, you know, they're going to win a lot of their games. Wouldn't be surprised if it's yeah, I can see a 14, 14 and two, 13 and three kind of season. Yeah, you know, um, Browns, Steelers, AFC North. So the last time. The last time these teams played each other, you know, the Browns are two four and one, the Steelers are three two and one, and that one, you know, obviously came from the week one tie. Um, but in week one, the Browns had Tyrod Taylor, you know, they had Carlos Hyde. Now they have Baker Mayfield. Now Chubb's going to be taking the majority of the uh, handoffs, and you know, the Steelers still don't have Le'Veon Bell. Um, they do have Juju, who's having a phenomenal year. Um, they have Antonio Brown, who's also having a really good year. You know, these. I I have the Steelers winning this game, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if the or if the Browns somehow pull it off, or if it's some weird tie thing, or you know, if with the Browns it might go to quadruple overtime or some weird stuff that the Browns do every week, and. I don't know. I think uh, I think it's gonna be interesting seeing Baker Mayfield play you know i have the steelers winning simply because it's in pittsburgh um 
And I wouldn't be surprised if Baker Mayfield has a bad game against the Steelers. You know, it is a division game. I think it's his first division game. Um, no, wait, he played the Ravens. He played the Ravens. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I think he's having a pretty decent year for a rookie. You know, a pretty decent year going out to this Browns team who's not, you know, known for being good. But I think he's making the most of it, and I think he's going to be a good quarterback going forward. I just don't think he's going to have what it takes to beat the Steelers at home. Yeah, I agree. Like you said, it's a, it's it's kind of weird how um, different the Browns are right now from Week One, um, where Tyrod was, Tyrod was your quarterback, and they had Carlos Hyde as their lead running back. Um, and now they don't have either of those guys playing for them. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, you know the Browns are an interesting team. They like like in the future. I think like give them like two years, three years, something like that. I think they're gonna be real competitive again in this division. But I, I think uh, it's still um, Pittsburgh has owned this division for a long time, and uh, I don't see the Browns really making a big push. Um, I, I think they're a better team, obviously, than what they have been. But I, I think the Steelers are a little, little uh, salty from the last game still, and we'll probably just uh, tear these guys up. Yeah, like I said, it, it'd so be a whole lot different if Baker Mayfield was playing the Steelers, you know, in Cleveland. Um, but on the road in Pittsburgh against a division rival, like good, good luck, Browns. I, I don't see you guys. I don't see you guys winning this game, but now I'll be cheering for you guys, but I just don't see it happening against the Steelers team. <clears throat> you know, Antonio Brown already has six. You know, <clears throat> Roethlisberger is having a great year too. Like 12 touchdowns, six interceptions, um, constantly scoring huge numbers in fantasy football. Um, <clears throat> so he's having a good year as well. You know, he's always a great quarterback, but you know, I always thought by now in his career he'd be kind of uh, digressing a little bit, but he's not really digressing at all. So that's weird. And even without, you know, Le'Veon Bell, whenever he decides to come back, if he decides to come back, however that whole contract issue works. But you know, this team is going to make another playoff push if they if they continue winning. You know, this game's important for both teams. I think uh, whoever wins this game will be in charge right uh um I, browns still have a little way to go but yeah the browns are the browns are one game back but because of them having four losses the steelers had their buy already um even if they win they'll still probably only be in fourth so interesting interesting so the next game you got the steelers winning right that's what you said yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Same. Seahawks three and three versus the Detroit Lions, who are also three and three. You wanna start? Yeah, man. So obviously we know uh you're a big Detroit fan. This is probably gonna be I think this is gonna be a very stressful game for you. Um I, I think uh I think, you know, the Seahawks are – the last few games are really starting to play better and kind of coming around and um, kind of identifying themselves as, you know, they're, they kind of have an identity crisis without the Legion of Boom anymore, right? Um, um, I think uh, now with Earl Thomas gone, they, they're just a different team. Um, their offense is actually playing well. Russell Wilson – you know, he, he should get a lot more credit for the things he can do on that team. Um, but on the other side, uh, the Lions, you know, they just picked up uh, Damon Harrison. Um, that'll I don't know if he'll play this week. He might get a few reps and everything. But that's going to be huge for them because their rush defense has been lacking this year. Um, and the offense for the Lions has been really, really lighting it up, um, really clicking on all fronts. Um, Carry on Johnson. Um, geez, when what can you what can you say about the guy? He he is definitely proving his worth. Um, 
had a huge game last week against Miami, and uh, it this is a tough game um, to pick just because it could go either way. Um, I, I I think uh, both these teams need a win, though. It's going to be tough to go below um, 500 for either of these guys um, just because of how competitive the NFC is going to be at the end of the year. But um, – Oh man, I I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the lines. Uh, I know you'd probably pick them too, but uh, I just uh, I think their their offense is just playing better right now than Seattle's. Yeah, so you pretty much have everything I have. Um, you know, Dam- Damon Harrison snacks. He's gonna fill that hole that the run game has or their uh, defensive line has against the run. Um, Seattle's 14th in rushing. Detroit is 16th. You know, um, Seattle has the number one ranked secondary. Detroit has the fourth ranked secondary. It's going to be an interesting game. Um, you know, on Johnson, like you were saying, was doing really well. He has two 100-yard games, um, which is insane because everyone knows that, you know, the Lions went 70-plus games without having a 100-yard rusher. Um you know, Blunt also is doing really well. He doesn't have as many yards, but he has three touchdowns. They're using him effectively in the red zone. Um, Galladay, Tate, Marvin Jones, you know, even the tight end Michael Roberts, they all have three touchdowns apiece. But, you know, if any if any secondary has the, the number of safeties, you know, the number of corners who are going to be able to contain all – three of these guys it's going to be seattle so it's going to be interesting um seattle doesn't really do well against the run so i think we can expect carry on johnson to have a pretty big game this weekend um but they do really well against the pass you know mcdug mcdougald mcdougald is his name bradley mcdougald and earl thomas um you know Dougald has 33 tackles five pass deflected two interceptions two forced fumbles and Thomas has five pass deflected, you know, three interceptions. As a team, the Seattle Seahawks have nine interceptions right now. Um, You know, and Detroit only has two, I believe. Let me look that up real quick. I think it's only two. Um, Yeah, two. um, With Slay and Diggs both having one. Um, Overall, I think Detroit's going to win. I'm going to bet pretty much Detroit every single game this year. Uh, you know, Stafford, since week one, you know, his second through, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth game, he has a hundred plus passer rating. Um, he has the longest active streak of 100 plus pass or quarterback ratings in the league right now with five. Um, he's been really, really well, um, doing well these last couple of weeks you know he went 18 for 22 against the dolphins um and it's interesting too because last week the lions had more rushing yards than passing yards um as a whole and i honestly do not remember the last time uh that's ever happened i don't even know if it's happened you know since sander i don't think it's happened since we've had stafford that's for sure um, if it is, I'd be surprised. Um, but yeah, it's carry on. Johnson's doing huge things for this team. Um, Kenny Galladay is doing huge things for this team and Tate and Jones. I pick the lions simply because I think running, I think it's going to be a ground game. Um, you know, two of the best secondaries are playing this week. Um, I'm, I'm expecting Wilson to still be able to rush um you know the guy's very elusive so i think he'll have a high number game if i if i had him in fantasy football i'd start him but i got lions winning as well so buccaneers Bengals. gosh all these games are gonna be are, all these games are so important this week uh four and three Bengals versus the um what are the bucks three and three <clears throat> How do you feel about Winston? Um, I, I I'm personally not a big fan of the guy, um, not just because of his uh, 
off field um, antics and everything. Just after watching him play um, occasionally, man, he I just I'm not a huge fan of him. I think I think he just tries to force things too often. Um, he doesn't really spread the ball around um, as much as he could. You know, he's got he's got Mike Evans, he's got Deshaun Jackson. Um, he just, uh, you know, he's already got six interceptions on the year and only five touchdowns. I don't think he's the guy for this team. Um, I just, I'm not a huge fan of him. Um, and, you know, the Bengals, man, they, uh, I was praising the Bengals last week and everything, but I, I think they'll, I, I got the Bengals winning this week and everything, but I'm, I'm not like too high on them. Um, I think they, they take the division lead if they win this week, but it just it just year in and year out, man, the Bengals are who we always think they are. Like they, they play decently enough to get a playoff spot, but you know, when it comes down to actually uh winning a game in the playoffs, I, I don't see them um competing against the Patriots or the Chiefs. Yeah. I mean I actually, this is the first game we have different people winning. Um, I got the Buccaneers winning. I don't really have a good reason why. I just kind of went with the Buccaneers. Um, You know, Winston, I agree. I'm not really a big fan of him. He's doing all right. I mean, but he only has five touchdowns and six interceptions. You know, he's been sacked more times than Fitzpatrick already. Um, but I think that has to do a little bit with uh, morale on the team. They started off so strong, and then they kind of declined. Um, you know, they're, I, I Tampa Bay is, like, the team in the NFL I just forget about the most. Like, I barely even think about that team as a team that often. Um, they're never really, like, after Sunday games when I'm like, oh, man, I want to go see who's doing well this week or who did well this week in the games I wasn't able to watch. You know, I, I don't think I ever even look at Tampa Bay as a whole. Um, you know, they do have Mike Evans, like you said, who's a really good player. Deshaun Jackson's a really good player. Both of them have three touchdowns. Um, and, you know, the Bengals, I'm a big fan of Andy Dalton. Um, I think he's one of those quarterbacks who's just, you know, never in the discussion, like, uh, you know, Flacco. And, and But I think he does... He's doing really well this year. Um, there's a couple. I forgot who was trying to trade him to me. I think it was, uh, you know, Ryan was trying to trade him to me, but I decided not to. Uh, but yeah, I, I really have the Bucks winning. I don't really have you know too much to say about this game. I think it's an important game for both teams. Um, I really do. I just you know don't really have much to say about it. I think it's gonna be an interesting game That's though. Fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, all right, moving on. No offense if you guys are fans of any of those two teams, but yeah, I got the Bucks winning. <laughs> uh, Jets three and four in Chicago against the three and three Bears. Duh, Bears. Uh, Bears. Yeah, and I got the the Bears winning this one. Um, I I think. Th- you know, last week uh, the Bears were only a few plays away from uh, winning that game. Really, a couple of mistakes they had, and um, a couple of turnovers that were pretty costly. Um, but they, you know, they went toe to toe with New England. Um, obviously, the Patriots didn't have Gronkowski, so that's kind of a big hit and everything. But um, I, I think uh, even Khalil Mack was a little banged up because he didn't get too many pressures. Um, yeah, he only had know, one tackle. Does. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think he is playing right now hurt on that ankle. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the Jets um, uh, got pretty, beat pretty bad last week against um, uh, Minnesota. Um, the defense played pretty well. Um, Minnesota scored a lot of points, but the defense actually held up for most of that game um i think the jets have a lot of good pieces for the future um but sam darnold is looking like a rookie obviously he's playing pretty well though for a rookie i'd say he's um 
I don't know, but one of the probably the uh, top two between him and uh, Mayfield, I would say. And uh, but I, I like the Bears in this one. It's in Chicago. It's a tough place to play. Just yeah, the Bears. So when we look at the Bears Pats game last week, um, the Bears easily could have won that game had they controlled their turnovers. Uh, Trubisky went two touchdowns, two interceptions last week. He had 333 yards, but those two interceptions ended up biting him in the butt, man. They also had their special teams gave up two touchdowns, I believe, one on a kick. I might be wrong here. One on a kick return and one on a like blocked punt, I think. Um, and it might have been a fumble. It might have been a fumble six or a black punt six. I don't remember. Um, but either way, their special teams or their defense scored way too many points against this Bears team. And, you know, it, we talk about Trubisky a lot. Um, you know, he is arguably the weakest quarterback in the NFC North, you know, in a division that both of us have different teams in. And he's doing really well. He's having a good year. He's got 13 touchdowns on the season. Um, six of them came from one game. But he, he had two touchdowns against the Patriots last week. Um, not exactly an easy team to score against. Um, it was in Chicago. And they only lost by pretty much one yard. Um, I don't know how it would have went it, had they gone into overtime. Uh, the Hail Mary stopped one yard short of tying it up. Assuming the PAT was you know made. Um, but, you know, the way they lost against the Patriots doesn't necessarily mean they are a worse team than the Patriots. Uh, you know, as soon as Khalil Mack, like you said, has that ankle injury kind of heal up and where he can put a little bit more strength on it, he's going to be back. Uh, hopefully it's not against the Lions. Hopefully it's, you know, after Thanksgiving. But, you know, I also got the Bears winning this game. I, the Jets have been struggling ever since week one. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. They have uh, 10 interceptions on the season. It's impressive. <clears throat> but, yeah, I got the Bears winning this game in Chicago, like you said. Uh, Soldier Field, so. Bears. I hope, the, I hope the Jets win, but, you know, Bears are probably going to win. All right. Redskins four and two versus the Giants one and six. This is an NFC East game. I don't really think it matters all too much. Uh, I think the Redskins are pretty much going to walk away with this game simply because the Giants are pretty much in full full panic rebuild mode right now, um, and it doesn't seem like they really have an agenda like a plan. I think they're just kind of giving away players. Uh, you know, they traded Damon Harrison to Detroit for a fifth. Uh, I think they could have got a little bit more for him, but, you know, they traded Eli Apple to the Saints. You know, there goes your best, you know, one of your best defensive linemen, your best secondary. Uh, and now you're playing the Redskins. You know, now you're playing an NFC East team. And it's going to be tough. It's a tough game. And, you know, I understand where the Giants were coming from with the rebuilding. But, I mean... I think if you're going to go, if you're going to admit your season's lost cause, you got to get more for your players, man. You got to. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. is having a decent year. Uh, Eli Manning's kind of struggling. I wouldn't be surprised if they look for a quarterback in the draft next year to start replacing Eli Manning. Uh, but, you know, Saquon Barkley doing really well. So, you know, there's that silver lining for you Giants fans. Uh, go out and get your Barkley jerseys. Yeah, um, yeah, like you said, man, uh, losing uh, two big pieces on your defense is kind of alarming in a way, um, and not really getting much from, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on with this team. I don't know if it's just Pat Shermer, the head coach, is not um, in control of it as much as he'd like to be, or that they are just as bad. Um, that Eli Manning is just consistently each week struggling and struggling. And then he'll have a few occasional good plays here and there. Um, 
to Odell Beckham Jr., who um, I, everyone's talking about how big of a diva he is and everything. Man, but the, I think the dude just wants to win. He's so sick and tired of getting embarrassed on national television. Right. Um, you know, like uh, whatever the game, um, who they lose to the other week, man. It was like uh, Falcons. Uh, well, I lost to the Falcons on Monday Night Football. You know, they they got pretty pretty embarrassed in that game. Um, the Eagles the week before that, but it was <clears throat> yeah. Who was that? It was the oh the Eagles. You know, the Eagles came in and kicked their ass in in New Jersey. You know, like uh, Beckham was just tired of losing, and I, you know I, I was kind of thinking they would even trade him um, if they're in a full rebuild and everything. Uh, it doesn't just seem like he wants to be there anymore. I don't think he has the trust and confidence in Eli Manning anymore. Um, I think this team, this team is just going to slowly fall apart the rest of the year. And, uh, you know, they, they could be looking at the first round, uh, first, first pick in the draft next year, maybe possibly who knows. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got the Redskins winning also. Uh, I think, I think Alex Smith is playing decent and the, <laughs> the, Never gonna go away. Adrian Peterson um, has been super impressive as well. Yeah, um, there was a there was a play. It was either last week or the week before, you know, where Adrian Peterson caught the ball. He was tiptoeing on the sideline, trying to stay in bound, and while he was off balance, he stiff armed a dude and was able to get more yardage while he was off balance. And it's like a guy that age should not be able to make plays like that, and he's still doing it. So, you know, good for him. Um, but yeah, I agree with the whole Eli Manning, Odell Beckham Jr. thing. You know, OBJ probably just wants to win. Uh, but I think the way he's divaing is kind of drawing a disconnection between him and Eli. I don't think Eli's targeting him as much as he could be simply because there's kind of that, you know, bitterness there right now. One of those guys has to go. Um, and I don't see the franchise wanting to trade Odell Beckham Jr. Um, you know, he is a arguably. I see a lot of Giants fans um, defending Eli Manning, though. Yeah. Um. You know, he is a he has a two time Super Bowl uh, MVP. Yeah. So that's. You know, are you gonna? Who do you want? Who do you want? Your all star uh, or your guy? I don't know. It's a reality television show waiting to happen. Really. <laughs> all right. Colts Raiders. You know, uh, Colts are two and five right now. Raiders are one and five right now, but one of those teams, and it's not the Raiders, is a lot better than the record shows. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm not really a big Andrew Luck fan. Uh, I don't hate the guy. I don't really just I don't think he's great. I think most of it comes from my bitterness of you know Madden ranking him above Matthew Stafford. But he's having a good year. He's having a really good year. Twenty touchdowns on the season already. Um, and they're two and five. Like that's insane. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I got the Colts winning this game, um, simply because you know the Raiders are just really bad this year. Um, and I think uh, T.Y. Hilton. You know he played last week, but I think he'll be healthy this week. Um, you know I think he was healthy last week. Obviously he played. But I think he's going to be kind of returning back to his self. He only had four receptions last week, 25 yards. And, you know, that was against the Bills team. Um, but they didn't really need him to do a whole lot since uh, their running back, Marlon Mack, kind of carried that team. And they got so far ahead of the Bills, they just kind of they just kind of didn't need to throw to T.Y. Hilton. Um <clears throat> You know, Eric Ebron is having a decent game or a decent season as well. Um but yeah, I got the I got the Colts winning. The Raiders I don't know what's wrong with the Raiders. I really don't. Um you know, I I like Marshawn Lynch. He's doing really well. Um uh I like Marshawn Lynch a lot. You know, Jordy Nelson, your guys is your guys' old boys tearing it up down there. Um yeah. I think did they trade Amari Cooper? Did they just trade Amari Cooper to the Cowboys, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they lost one of their best wide receivers. 
Uh, so the pressure is pretty much going to go on to Jordy Nelson going forward, I believe. And, uh, you know, Jordy Nelson did great things in Green Bay, but I don't think he can carry this Raiders team to, you know, a win this week against the Colts. So, oh, man. Yeah, no, I, I the the Raiders, man, they're, they're a mess. Um, Marshawn Lynch went on IR um, this week, too. So he oh, I did not know that. could be out the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, he got the rest of the year. Um, Derek Carr is taking a bunch of hits. He is, he he's not trusting his O line. He's not getting the ball out to the receivers. He's afraid to get hit. Um, the, the team's just an utter mess right now. Um, I, I I think they're man. It's hard to pick a a, a worst team in the NFL just because there are like four or five who each week I could say, yeah, they are the worst team in the NFL. Um, but man, it, and honestly might be the Raiders. Um, they're, you know, they're getting all these draft picks and everything, um, draft capital for the future, which, Hey man, good on you, but man, what price, you know, this, this team, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you can never fully guarantee that your first round draft picks are going to turn out to be stars. And you trade some of these guys who have proven they are, right? You trade Khalil Mack, who uh, probably the best player um, on defense right now. You trade Amari Cooper, a Pro Bowl receiver. Um, I mean, they got, got, got a massive but... team. Yeah, they I mean, got a first for him, which they definitely won that trade. Um, but, yeah, man, I, I like the Colts, too, in this one. I think uh, – it's unfortunate though that they they started out um, as bad as they did because um, I think they could have been competitive if they didn't start out uh, one five. I think they still have a shot to maybe um, make a playoff push. It's gonna be tough, real tough. Um, but uh, honestly, man, super super impressive that um, Andrew Luck does have twenty touchdowns. Man, I did not know that until you said that. So I was actually really surprised. Yeah, he's uh he's doing really well. Um, it's just he doesn't have a team around him. You know, like I was saying, Ebron's doing pretty decent. He put up a hundred yards against a hundred yards and two touchdowns against the Pats uh, a couple weeks back. You know, he's constantly doing okay. He's a lot better down there, um, where he doesn't have to necessarily block as much as he did in Detroit, um, where he's typically just a receiving tight end. But you know. They, they lost, you know, T.Y. Hilton for so long that I feel like they could have won a lot of games had they had him. Um, you know, Andrew Luck, 20 touchdowns out of pretty much nothing. And, you know, I don't want to be like they don't have anyone great on their team, but, you know, T.Y. Hilton is pretty much their only thing um, they have. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine receivers with touchdowns this year nine different receivers with touchdowns that's how that's how well he uh luck is spreading the ball down there so colts raiders so this game this next game we're going to talk about is is going to be kind of it's it's my nfl who cares of the week game <laughs> and it's between the 49ers <laughs> and the cardinals um you know Going into this season, I would almost be looking forward to this game in a way. Uh, you know, um, you know, David Johnson, Fitzgerald, you know, a rookie, a rookie quarterback, and Josh Rosen going against you know uh, Jimmy G, you know, in this this good 49ers offense. But that's not how it played out, and you know, now we got. You know, backup quarterback who's who's doing okay in the 49ers. Um, Kittle's doing pretty decent, but, you know, that's all they got down there. I don't think uh, – I think that has a lot to do with Jimmy G being hurt and not being able to have as accurate as a passer as Jimmy G. Um, I'd, I was excited to see Jimmy G this season too because I wanted to see if he was going to live up to that hype, to live up to the – you know, at the time, highest paid quarterback after, you know, only playing seven se- or seven games. Um, Josh Rosen, three touchdowns, five interceptions. I don't 
you know, on paper, on paper, the Cardinals have a good team ish. You know, they got Fitzgerald, they got David Johnson, Christian Kirk. Like, they don't have a bad team, but they're just bad. I don't know. They're just not. They're just not good this year. And so, I think a lot of it has to do with their offensive line, man. Um, <clears throat> man, that that Broncos game was. Uh, probably one of the most games, but also one of the most entertaining games. Um, just to just to see how dominant the Broncos' defensive line was against um, the Cardinals' offensive line. I mean, Rosen had like a second to throw the ball, if that. And when he did throw the ball, he was under pressure the entire time. Um, his team wasn't helping him out at all. Um, Man, I, I don't have much to say about this game because I I just feel bad for both these uh both these teams and their fans. Uh I don't know. Give me uh give me the 49ers, I guess. <laughs> That's oh, who, all I got. I don't even remember who I picked. I got to go back. Um I picked the 49ers as well. Um I yeah. didn't really have a reason why. I don't think uh, either of Either of, it can go either way, not because both of these teams are good, but both of them are, you know, just not performing as well as they could be this year. And yeah. you know, it is an NFC. And whoever wins, it doesn't. Yeah, it's an NFC West game, but you know, <laughs> uh, the Rams are going to win that division. So good, yeah. good luck. And I don't see either one, even if they win out. Well, maybe they can make the playoffs if they won out, but I don't see that happening. Uh, so. I mean, maybe start looking to trade some guys, get some picks. I don't know. Do something. Uh, you know, it, it kind of sucks. You know, Cardinals going forward could potentially have a decent team. Um, they got that rookie contract, you know, unlike uh, 49ers where they're pretty much going to be struggling to get, you know, decent players on for now on as long as they got Jimmy G. But, you know, with Rosen, he's not living up to his hype. I'd almost, I'd almost put Bradford in. But I don't know. All right, this this one's gonna be interesting. Uh, Packers who are three two and one in Los Angeles against the Rams who are seven and zero. Oh. I feel like you're gonna have a lot to say about this, and I don't think you're gonna like what you say. <laughs> I don't, man. Um. This, this sucks. <laughs> this game just sucks. Um, so for the Packers, like before the season started, um, and I looked at the schedule, um, after the bye week, uh, the next five games they have um, Los Angeles Rams in Los Angeles at New England, home against Miami, at um, Minnesota, and then at Seattle. Um, that is – I'm going to say that is the – it's brutal. Most brutal five game stretch in the NFL this year. Um, it's brutal. And it's absolutely brutal. Yeah. Um, I mean, not only the fact that um, you know our division's been super competitive this year, um, but the Rams in Seattle they have uh, tough places to play. New England's a tough place to play. I Man, I, I don't even really feel comfortable saying that. Um, like Miami is an easy win either. Um, it's just, man, I, where, where, where Green Bay is at right now, um, team's getting healthier. We'll see a few players that we haven't seen in a while this week. Um, Geronimo Allison should be back. Randall Cobb is still, list, still listed as questionable, but he should be back. He should make a big impact. Um, the defense is getting healthier with, uh, um, Jair Alexander, and we might even see uh, Breland, who we picked up um, a few weeks ago, who hasn't even made his debut yet. Has he not played? Um, he has not played yet. Yep. Huh. Um, so the thing is about this game, man, is just how, how do you stop the Rams? Who, who, who do you cover that you shut down? Do you shut down Ty Gurley but open up Brandon Cooks? Um, and uh, Cooper Cup probably won't play this week either. I think he's hurt. Um but man, this team is just super impressive. Um, uh, I, 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 I've never felt worse 
about going into a game or like a stretch of games. Felt... Yeah, uh, I just uh, man, I, I don't think it's really from Green Bay or the team they are because I think they're starting to click better. Um, but man, just the schedule for anyone would be absolutely horrible. And uh, I, I, I said um, I look at the schedule too that if we lost more than one game in our first six games, that I think we might miss the playoffs, and we did. <sighs> um, we we shouldn't have lost one to the Redskins, and we shouldn't have lost one to Detroit. Um, not saying that those teams. Uh, what I'm starting to say is like. We, we couldn't afford to lose those games or even tie with Minnesota. Yeah, I think your biggest problem need... was that tie, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I think in, uh, in play- come playoff time. You know, at least you guys um, didn't choke I'm against gonna, the Bills. I'm pick... Yeah. I'm going to pick L.A. Um, uh, I, I think they're going to put up 35, 40 points, and I don't think, uh, I don't think we're going to put up that many points to compete with them. So, you know, it's obviously I'm a Detroit Lions fan, so I'd love to see you guys lose. But, you know, as a Detroit Lions fan, it's going to be kind of sacrilege, but I don't hate the Packers as much as a lot of people do. And I think that's mostly because, you know, me and you used to be roommates. Um, that being said, you know, you Aaron Rodgers is so good that you can't really count him out. Um I don't think you guys are going to get blown out as much as you think you're going to get blown out. And I think at one point in this game, you know, you're not going to want to drink yourself to death. I think you'll be, you know, close. And, you know, if if they can make that close comeback, you know, if Aaron Rodgers turns into whatever the hell he does where he just turns on and just goes off, maybe if, if Aaron Rodgers can beat this team with the amount of injuries the Packers have right now, he solidifies himself as the best quarterback in the NFL. Um, Will he? I don't know. He's kind of hurt. He's on a bum leg still, I think. Uh, I don't think it's healed. And, you know, Jimmy Graham, you know, again, Lions fan, so, but, you know, I had high expectations for Jimmy Graham coming into this season. Um, You know, I thought he was going to have a similar connection with Aaron Rodgers as he did when he played in New Orleans against, or with uh, Drew Brees. You know, I didn't think he did that well. I didn't think they used him effectively in Seattle as well as they could have. Um, but Rodgers and Breeze are similar in play style. Um, you know, they're both really good, really accurate, and get the ball going where they need to. Um, I was watching this interview with our old quarterback, um, Safety Dan, Dan Orvlowski, um, who you guys may remember as the guy who ran out the back of the end zone. And he was talking about the only way you can really contain Rodgers is to keep him inside the pocket. Because when he's outside of the pocket, he is one of the most deadly quarterbacks in the league. Um, You know, and the the Rams have a good defense. The Rams have an all-around good team. But, you know, we play him later this year, and I still think – I don't think we have a shot really, but I think this could be the first team we see that has a perfect season in – they're so good, man. I got the Rams winning too, but I don't think it's going to be that bad of a loss. I think I think you guys will take the lead like at least once or twice in the game. But, you know, who knows? So I think this next game, uh, what time are you guys playing? What time is that game? Uh, 4.25. Oh, I'll be able to watch it. <clears throat> uh, so the uh, Saints Vikings is a uh, Sunday night football. Yeah, Saints Vikings. That's the uh, one we're about to watch. I think it's gonna be the game of the week. Um, this <laughs> Saints Vikings. So I'll be able to watch all three. You know, the Lions, the Packers, and the Vikings this week, this Sunday. So that'll be interesting. Um, the Saints Vikings. The Saints are five and one. The Vikings are four two and one. You know, both of us need the Saints to win this game. Uh, but, man, both teams look really good. Both teams look really good. Uh, you want to start? I don't. 
Yeah, this is a, like you said, man, these teams are both playing really well, man. Um, uh, this, is a, this is a tough game to pick. I I also have this being the, the, the game of the week. It's just um, obviously the rematch of the uh, Minneapolis Miracle from last year um, where the Saints almost won that game, you know, until uh, a fluke play at the end of the game won the won it for the Vikings, but um, man, I really, I really think that Drew Brees is on a mission this year um, to just not only win an MVP, but to win another Super Bowl before he, before he just leaves the game. Um, he's playing really well. Um, Kamara and Ingram are, you know, probably, I don't know, I would say probably the best two running backs combo in the league right now. Um, Drew Brees still doesn't have an interception. Um, dude's playing on real football, but also so is Kirk Cousins. Um, you know he he's tossing the ball. He got Adam Thielen uh, tearing it up every week. <laughs> um, it's this is gonna be. I think this will be a high scoring game, like real high scoring game. Um, uh, man, it's really tough to pick though. Just you know, it's in it's in Minnesota, so they have that advantage. It'll be loud. Um, yeah, but, uh, I'm gonna pick the Saints. I'm gonna pick the Saints. So this game is interesting, um, simply because you know the Vikings have Thalen, Diggs, Rudolph. You know, a really good, a really good combo there. Uh, you know, like you were saying, Thalen stand up 117 yards per game this year. Um, he's currently on the longest active. 100 plus you know he might break the record for consecutive 100 yard games i think that's either this week or next week that he would do that uh he would break calvin johnson's record but um defensively though the vikings have xavier Rhodes, and you know a cornerback like that you know a pro bowler a really good cornerback like that is going to be you know a challenge for breeze but on the other end of the football you know the raid or uh, the Saints now have Eli Apple, which is going to be a challenge for Kirk Cousins. So that's interesting that both of these teams have really good corners now, really good you know passing quarterbacks, but one team has a running game and the other team does not. Um, I think it's going to come down to the running game here, surprisingly, because you know both of these teams have a decent secondary. Um, but they're also really good uh, throwing. You know, uh, Drew Brees broke like what the record this year for all-time yards, and you know, just hit his 500 touchdown last week against the Ravens. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's gonna be so good. I think this is gonna be a great game. Um, I'm excited for it. I'm really looking forward to this game. I also have the Saints winning. Uh, let me double check. Yep, I have the Saints winning. Um. But I think that's only because I want them to win. It is in Minnesota, uh, you know, and, you know, I want the Vikings to lose. That's just how it is. That's how the NFC North is. So, um, if they lose, uh, they go 4-3-1. and one. If we somehow beat the Seahawks, we go 4-3. and three. I think they still have one up on us because of that tie, but, you know, we'll get there. Hopefully. So, you guys also want them to lose. As a team, and it looks like you're picking them as a person. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That could go either way. You know, the Vikings did work last week, uh, and the Saints, you know, barely won. So, uh, yeah. The last matchup is going to Monday Night Football between the Patriots and the Bills. Uh, holy shit, this is going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> You know, it is. It is. Uh, this, this is <laughs> what the week to pick. This is gonna, this is gonna be Patriots all the way. Um, uh, when I was talking about earlier, uh, like four or five teams in the NFL being the worst and hard uh, to pick, who is the worst? Uh, the Bills might be that team, and I always go back and forth between like the Bills and uh, the Cardinals and the Giants, man, but. I truly think it is actually the Bills. Um, the, you know, they bring in Derek Anderson to um, relieve Nathan Peterman of his job because Josh Allen's hurt. 
Nathan Peterman throws three interceptions. <laughs> they score five points. Um, this, oh my god, this team is a mess. The Patriot Tom Brady has a has like a fourteen and two record. Um, and like the last um like sixteen games he's played against Buffalo in Buffalo, um. And that is that is better than the Bills have ever done in a season. Um, this game is not going to be close. This is going to be the Patriots all the way. I might not even watch this game because it's all on Monday Night Football. The worst, um, <laughs> the worst you think, team and the worst broadcast. You think, yeah? You think Monday Night Football is the worst worst coverage right now? Horrible! It's absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. Uh, the Patriots. You know, they, they're they going to have Gronk back this week, I believe. They're going to have – it doesn't even matter who they have. Uh, I Oh, man, I feel bad for this Bills team, you know. I feel bad for LaShawn McCoy. I feel bad for everybody in that organization. But, man, you know, you were talking about it last week. Like, how does this team have – how is this not one of the most talked about things that this team has two wins this year? Like, yeah. they beat the Vikings. They blow yeah. out the Vikings. Well, no. We'll we'll never we'll never figure that Vikings game out. I think it was just one of those days, man. <laughs> just one of those days. And then the Bills, they beat them thirteen to twelve. So yeah, one of those days again. I don't know. Um, going forward, the Bills, it's gonna be hard for them to get another win. Uh, and they don't even necessarily have that tough of a schedule. You know, I feel like if you know the Lions or the Packers had their schedule, they'd probably end up doing really well. Uh, you know, they got the, the Pats, they got the Bears after that, but then they got, you know, how come we didn't play the, how come we didn't play the, do we play them? We play the Bills. We don't play the Bills. Why do the Bears, the, why do the Bears, the Packers, and the Vikings play the Bills and we don't get the Bills? That seems bullshit. But. You play the Bills, yeah you do. Oh yeah, we do. There it is. <clears throat> uh huh. Yeah. There we go. Do you play them? Yeah, we play them. Uh, week fifteen. Uh, December They're in Buffalo. Okay. December sixteenth. A cold game. Right. And then uh, you know, after that we go to Lambo, which is the day before New Year's. Do we should go to that game? Nah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> But, yeah, uh, I don't really have much to say about the Patriots-Bills. I hope there's some weird fluke and the Bills win. No reason. Just, you know, it'd be funny to see the Patriots lose the Bills. But, uh, yeah, I probably, you know, like you were saying, ESPN's coverage kind of sucks. They do those weird tied. No, wait, that's Thursday Night Football. They do uh, last week. The tied out things are terrible, too. (laughs) Last week they had, like, like, they played a halftime show, and they hyped it up like it was going to be live, and it was just, like, a music video from MTV. Like, what the hell is this? I've done that every week. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to, like... I'd be pissed if, like, oh, boy, rolls down through in that, like, jumbo cart thing where he's just, like, in the way. Like, what are you doing? Oh, but there's a there's a TV on the back of it. Yeah, it's delayed. <laughs> like... I'd be so mad if I was paying for those seats, too. Because you gotta imagine, like, like you pay it five hundred bucks at least, right, for maybe a ticket at some places, um, or five hundred bucks altogether, and your your view of the game is blocked by this stupid screen that doesn't contribute anything. Like, dude, it, what does it contribute? Why at is all he to the broadcast, dude? Why is he down there? It makes no sense. It'd be one thing if he was like filming, but then you wouldn't need to show him. Like, you just ask this guy's opinion every once in a while? Why doesn't he just sit up in the booth with the other two? Like, what's going on here? Like, why doesn't he just, like, stand on the sideline? Like, why does he need the stupid <laughs> fucking cart? <laughs> why does he need the cart? Is it so he can see? Is that what he's trying to do? Why doesn't he just have a TV where they have a camera angle where he can see? Like, why are you obstructing people's views? I don't know. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully the refs get it together. Uh, hopefully, you know, they're not all scared like uh, it seemed like they were last game, like you were talking about. But, you know, I think that pretty much covers, you know, the basics. 
uh, you know, Giants are on a downward spiral. The Bills are kind of the Bills. Uh, it's going to be interesting going, watching the Saints-Vikings game. Uh, you know, the the Packers could pull it off this week. You know, I someone has to beat the Rams, right? Why not the Packers? So, uh, man, it's going to be a brutal, brutal season. So, yeah. Maybe you guys can run the table again. <laughs> no. But, all right, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are watching on YouTube, make sure you guys follow us, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're watching on Twitch, make sure you hit that purple heart. Uh, give us that follow. Give us that like. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, 32 and goal. Uh, the link should be in description on both Twitch and YouTube. Um, we're trying to set it up so we can, you know, have it on iTunes and Google soon. Um, so follow us on Twitter, get updates on that. And yeah, thank you guys for coming out and we will see you sometime next week to talk about the Sunday games that just happened. But until then, have a good week. Peace out.